Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Oscar Antepara. I'm a postdoc in the Applied Numerical Algorithms Group. And today I'm going to talk about um, the research that the group has been doing the last years, and I will continue during my postdoc. This talk will be about an accurate numerical algorithm for scientific applications with complex geometries. The main motivation uh, to do this kind of research is to deal with most of the problems that uh, are related to fluid dynamics or another um, energy applications where complex geometries are needed. Um, and we will like to find um, a way to develop uh, numerical algorithms or numerical methods to achieve um, high accuracy and that the answer, the physical answer that we could get are the most close to the reality. In this slide, what I would like to do is to introduce yourself to some complex um, uh, applications that we can find in different sectors. So here we have um, examples in aerodynamics, aerospace, or electronics. Just to, to illustrate this, um, this kind of um, problems we have here to the left, this is like twirling flows around square cylinders that is part of the my research that I did during my PhD where um, is kind of um, very challenging because you need to solve um, in a very accurate uh, stable way um, the boundary layer close to the uh, close to the geometry um, even though this could be as kind of a simple example because it's just a square you could um, start to do research on another applications like simplify car models are in this case the complex the geometry is getting more complicated or or NACA profiles that are more um, more um, that are a very good example for aerospace engineering. Another kind of application that we could find are in the sector of um, electronics and in this example that I have been working on for a few years ago was um, to develop a model to describe um, the uh, the the air condition and the flow bit, uh, inside an antenna that this is very close in image related to the the antenna that you have at the top of your car. Most of the challenges that are uh, here illustrated are I have pointed out here, where the grid generation is a problem. It's not very easy to generate this kind of geometries. Um, most of the time, the way that we, uh, I was doing it was just um, using a commercial uh, code to generate this kind of um, um, profiles with, um, with triangles or with unstructured grids. The other challenge is your numerical method has to be able to correctly um, give you a physical answer for the boundary layer, and this is also a very complicated topic. And the next one is a uh, most of these uh, problems are explicit geometry representation where we are taking most of the geometries from a CAD file or from, or, or from a commercial code and then try to implement those um, characteristics and that geometry inside our numerical code. Another industrial applications uh, are related to the sectors of the power and chemical and pharmaceutical. And here we have uh, some examples about multiphase flows, where we have like a rising bubble inside a pipe that is not straight. And in the other example, we have the, um, the work that I was doing during my first postdoc, that was uh, an MFIX EXA project that was a, a new CFD DM code to solve problems for um, related to the chemical reactors. And the challenges that we can find here are still the same. The grid generation is uh, very difficult to do. And to have uh, conservative and stable discretization is also very challenging. And the reason behind that is, uh, as um, I can point out in the example for the rising bubble, if you don't have a conservative and stable discretization, you could end up with, without a bubble at the end. So the bubble could start to rise and get attached to the wall, or the bubble can start to just break up that physically that doesn't happen in specific regimes that we could be doing research on. And the last challenge that we could find is that explicit geometry representation is, is still uh, 
pretty difficult to do. And as an example, in the right, we could generate this um, chemical loop reactor by just doing operations of cylinders or unions, intersections, in order to have the final product. And those are challenges that we, we, have, to, we have to deal with, and we are very excited about how to do, with it, how to do it and the new numerical method that could develop in order to uh, tackle of these uh, kind of problems. In, uh, in this slide, what I would like to do is um, to explain about the opportunities that we could have now in HPC, um, because now that we have identified most of the problems, the challenges that we, we want to solve, and we have uh, some idea about the numerical method that we want to construct, we will use uh, HPC facilities to solve these kind of problems. Uh, in the picture in the left, we have um, some studies done in that reference where future 2025 GPU uh, may have an arithmetic intensity of 60 flops. So this is like a, a roof line model um, and the prediction between 2015 and 2025 of um, how it will look like future architectures. And as an introduction of what is a roofline model, it's just a, a way to identify the performance for different operations that our code is doing uh, based on the arithmetic intensity and some properties of the, or of the architecture of the GPU or CPU architectures and the prediction that we have for 2025. And most of the um, code that we are writing for numerical methods for fluid dynamics are based on a sparse matrix spectrum multiplication and extensive uh, uh, operations. And those are uh, uh, C-trader located to the left. Those are membrane-bounded membrane -bounded operations that we could have a very good opportunity to improve um, those kind of operations by um, improving our data locality and the memory movement, because these are operations that are um, to the left from this point that is the balance between memory bounded and computer bounded operations for the architecture that we are looking at. So this is a good opportunity to um, relate many fields, as, um, as I said before. So we have the applied math mathematicians developing numerical methods like high order methods that are very accurate or a stable or conservative methods. And we have the HPC uh, people that are related to these kind of operations that we have new architectures, we have CPU, GPUs, how we are going to deal, what are the main operations that we are doing, how we want to improve it. Uh, finally, we have the scientific engineering problems that I mentioned before, that um, we want to solve these kind of problems in the best way possible, or the, way, or the best way that um, we could have solutions that are very close to reality. So in that case, we have um, um, come to a scientific solution and some goals uh, that I will do during my postdoc during uh, the next month so that I started to do it uh, when I joined the group. And it's the development of high order methods in, in a final volume framework. This will give us um, three main um, advantages that will be like the achieve high accuracy with fewer degrees of freedom also, we will follow conservation principles. And the other advantage that we we'll have is that we will have mostly uh, sparse matrix vector multiplications that um, if we manage to construct um, in, a, in a good way to uh, take advantage of the future architectures within all the architectures that we already have in the HPC world, um, we could have a, um, uh, we could develop numerical methods that could have a very good arithmet arithmetic intensity. And uh, in the sense for complex geometry generation and grid generation, that is another of the main challenges that I presented before, mm, we are going to use implicit functions or constructed solid geometries. This is a pretty good way, easy way, to construct very, uh, very difficult um, geometries or, and generate these kind of grids in a way that is not uh, even explicit, that I will just um, explain that later on during my presentation. So the main goal, the main target, will be the development of conservative higher order methods for 2D and 3D grids with complex geometries and space-time discretization for moving boundaries. Like in this picture we have, 
is arise involved in 2D where the, the, the boundary between the two fluids are moving. And coming from the initial state, it's just a circle until the final state that will be kind of um, the shape that we, has, the, the we are looking at now in the picture. And, and that is happening because of the surface tension that is uh, between two fluids. Now we'd like to introduce yourselves to the main method that we, we, we want to, uh, we are doing research on. And uh, as I said, we want to develop um, a high order method uh, within a finite volume framework. And finite volume fluxes enforce conservation. So when we are going to solve um, um, a flux operation, a, a flux problem, using finite volume method and using the divergence theory, that is the question that we will end up. And we are going to expand the right hand side um, following uh, the picture to the right where we have a volume of fluid or a cell that is, has been intersected by a complex geometry. We will have the fluid volume, the phase, uh, the phases of the cell that are still inside the fluid and the phase that is um, related to the complex geometry. So we could expand the right hand side and for different dimensions going from one, two or three in the space um, world or we could also expand for a space time discretization following just a 2D plus time or 3D plus time or even higher. Where we are expanding that, we will end, we will end up with um, within integrals over phases to represent the fluxes that are there. So this is a very good um, example of how to look like with finite volume. This is still the exact exact way of looking at. Um, the other good thing of using finite volume is like the way that is constructed gives you some physical sense in in the way that fluxes that get in by one phase has to get out by another phase and the contribution that the, 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 the boundary is also given to this kind of problem. So this is a good way to, uh, to look at these kind of problems. In the next slide, I want, uh, now how we're we going to achieve high order accuracy. So we are going to do an a Taylor series expansion to the pth order. So you need to establish which kind of um, order of accuracy you want to achieve, and then you're going to expand your function. You're going to plug in this expansion inside the equation that uh, I mentioned before, and you will end up with this equation that is now the discretized way, this discretized way version of our equation. And from this one, we'll, we will need to find this term that are called moments. Um, this is what I'm going to explain in the next slide of how can we find this in a very easy way. So in order to find the moments, uh, we could use a still finite volume and the divergence theory. And in this way, we'll satisfy the geometric conservation automatically. So to compute all the moments that to do the grid generation, we are going to take this function. We are going to plug in um, in the equation that we sh I showed before, finite volume. And we will end up, uh, we will expand this equation. We will end up with a geometric conservation equation that is written down there. In a way to solve this, um, this equation is, is you can um, uh, check it, the reference uh, from Schwartz and Kamp 20, 20, 2015. Um, and the way to do it is, is, I would like to explain with this picture. So here in the right, uh, we have um, um, we have low dimensions uh, moments to find higher dimension moments. So we will go first to the intersections of our implicit function, the, l the level sets equal to zero. And we will find intersections on edges, that is our lower dimension. Um, from here, we, are going, we can be able, following this equation, to compute the moments for the phases. Uh, that will be our 2D moments. Um, from here, we could uh, change our approximation to go to a space-time computation. 
going to um, to evaluate the moments where our uh, faces have changed by any reason, or we could go just to the 3D approximation where we can compute the moments for 3D going for the 2D moments. And this is the main idea behind how the algorithm will look like. For more details, it's better just to look for, for the reference. The importance of the higher order geometry representation are, are illustrated here. Uh, I wanted to just to show, to show you why this is important in the sense of um, if you are using a low order geometry representation, you could end up like in 2D with some stair function or in 3D, if you are representing a sphere, you will have this, this kind of shape. And if we are using high order discretization and we are computing high order moments, um, the way that it will look like will be more um, close to the reality. Uh, we will be more close. Will be more related or close to the actual um, geometry or that we want to um, do a simulation or all over it. So this is very important to have accurate and stable and stable and conservative. Um, solutions for our equations. After we have computed all our moments, um, now we have to compute our high order fluxes for finite volume. And this is obtained following this equation that will be uh, related to, um, to the evaluation of uh, the average values over cells. And then with this, we could get our fluxes on the faces. Now our question will be uh, to find uh, the best polynomial coefficients that are here in this equation for the average uh, over near, nearby, nearby volumes. Um, in order to do that in this paper, um, we have found that um, one way to, found, to find these polynomial coefficients using uh, weighted least squares. So in the picture in the right, um, there is a description of how our operator um, looks like for its uh, spectral properties. If we choose an exact operator that is represented by the dotted line, this is a 1D example, and we are computing our discrete operators without weight, we could see that our spectral properties doesn't look good as here in this line that is zero with no weight. As um, we introduce the weight matrix that is uh, uh, a matrix that has been computed with uh, evaluated with the distance between um, the phase centroid and the nearby uh, values of the cells. And we are going to introduce this weighting matrix. We can see that we could get a better properties that will be more closer to the exact solution. So that, that is the reason why we have chosen to do uh, this kind of operation. After we have defined um, our model, our discretization operations, and how to define our stencils for high order discretizations, we have put all of these inside Shombo, that is a computational framework for solution of partial differential equations with complex geometries. Jumbo 4 is a Fortran free package for implementing this kind of um, methods. Uh, also, the, you can use, um, you can solve partial differential equations on block adaptive grids. And Jumbo also supports calculations in complex geometries with dependent boundaries. After all of this, uh, I have done some geometric convergence studies. And one way, even though it's very simple to do, uh, to do this is just to evaluate the area and perimeter of different um, uh, shapes. And in this case, for 2D, what I have done is just take an implicit function representing a circle and ellipse. And by grid generation algorithm that I showed before, we can compute the area and perimeter. And these are the results for those operations. Um, the pictures in the left are the circle area and the circle perimeter error. The error is just the difference between 
the exact solution and our discrete solution. Uh, in the right, we have the same for the ellipse area and the ellipse perimeter. So if we do uh, zooming for the ellipse perimeter error, we can see that um, the error for, so we have the error in the y-axis and we have the number of cells um, in the x axis. So as we can see, like if we took the example of 16 number of cells um, for this 2D problem, 16 to the square, uh, the error diminished uh, pretty much when we are using different uh, order of ac accuracy, going from one uh, second order or four order. And w w w the main, the main takeaway of this picture is that as we use high order, we could get um, very small errors with less um, number of cells. We have also demonstrated the convergence for a Poisson solver. This is the solution for a four-order algorithm um, for a Poisson solver in, in a square domain uh, outside an ellipse. And in this reference, uh, uh, we have computed the, the, the error for different errors for different solutions. And the main takeaway here is that we, we could achieve also a four order convergence for, for this kind of operators and, and, and this kind of problem. Um, so as a summary until now, we have, um, I have explained how it looks like the model, the mathematical model for high order methods using finite volume and the main characteristics that we need to um, to have this model in, in its completion. So we have an algorithm to compute all the moments and a way to also have the best polynomial coefficients for computing our stencils to compute the fluxes over, over phase uh, um, values and we have done this with CHUM before, and we had uh, some convergence studies going on to show that we could achieve high order accuracy. So we have a strong foundation for high order conservative discretizations. Now the research will go on operators, stability in presence of small cells, like here in this picture to the left. If we see now the complex geometry boundary, and we establish that the inner part is where we are going to solve our partial differential equations. There could be a chance that you could get, you could find these kind of small cells. And we already have shown that uh, the operators, um, um, the way that we are solving for the, 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 the operators, we could get some very good spectral properties that will lead to stability. But we still have to do so much research for these kind of problems. And after all of this, we can couple this know-how for advection diffusion of fluid solvers, like the example that we have here to the right. And finally, we will make versions of these algorithms for GPUs in order to achieve very good GPU performance. If we are very successful with um, all these targets, um, to, uh, that, that is one of the main um, reasons for this postdoc and this project is to um, have a high order method that could solve um, advection diffusion problems and also fluid problems. We would like to um, apply um, our new method or the, um, the have we have developed um, for different kind of problems that our group are dealing now. And one of those problems are the eye sheet grounded line and that what well, they are using also AMR. And that will be a, a, a very good challenge to, um, to apply our, our new knowledge, our new numerical methods that we have developed. There are other challenges as a multi-material heat transfer problem and compressible number stocks that uh, I would like to also look like uh, at and, and, uh, and help to solve um, in a very good way, very in a very accurate, conservative, and stable way. That that is the main um, idea behind this method. 
And with that uh, higher note, I would like to conclude my presentation and thank you very much to, for your attendance to this talk. I would like to say thank you to my mentor, Hans Johansen, and all ANA group that uh, has been very helpful for to me doing this research. So thank you very much, and I'm very open to any question that you could have. Thank you.